Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making such videos for you. Start of Chapter 5 God, unique in his attributes. God Almighty is absolutely unique in his person and in his attributes. In no way is he to be compared or comparable with any other person or thing that we know or can imagine. In the last verse of the surah quoted in the preceding chapter, we are reminded that not only is nothing like him, but nothing is in the likeness of him that can be imagined. Then how can we know him? We will realize him through his attributes. The last and final revelation of God, the Holy Qur'an gives us 99 attributes of God with the crowning name Allah. These 99 attributes are names called the Asma'ul Husna, the most beautiful names, are interspersed throughout the whole Qur'anic text, like a beautiful necklace of pearls with a magnificent pendant, Allah. Here is a sample segment of that necklace. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو. He is Allah, besides whom there is no other God. الملك القدوس السلام. The Sovereign, the Holy One, the Source of Peace and Perfection. المؤمن المهيمين. The Guardian of Faith, the Preserver of Safety. العزيز الجبار المتكبر. The Exalted in Might. The irresistible, the supreme. Subhanallah amma yushrikun. Glory to Allah, high is he above the partners they ascribe to him. He is Allah, the creator, the evolver, the bestower of forms or colours. Lahul Asma ul Husna. To him belong the most beautiful names. يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ All that is in the heavens and the earth doth declare his praise and glory. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And he is the exalted in might, the wise. Holy Qur'an, Surah Hashr, Chapter 59, Verses 23 and 24 The Most Beautiful Names In the two verses quoted above, we count 13 of the 99 attributes interspersed throughout the Holy Qur'an. Even the most jaundiced and inimical opponent of Islam will be forced to admit that even in its translated form, the attributes and the phraseology are beautiful and unique. In its original Arabic, the wordings and their construction are absolutely inimitable and sublime. How could an Umni, an unlettered person, among an Umni, unlearned nation contrived such a rhapsody of God 1400 years ago, we must remember that there were no encyclopedias or treatises that Muhammad wasallam could consult, even if they were lying around in the deserts of Arabia. From where then did Muhammad wasallam get this treasure trove of theology? He said, It is all given to me by God through inspiration. How else can we account for it? It would be a good experiment to ask the most learned of our learned friends to conjure up some attributes of God for us. I assure you that with all their acquired knowledge, the professors of theology and the doctors of divinity will not be able to recount even a dozen. The worldly wise will say that, you see, Muhammad was a genius. And after all, a genius can excel ten times better than us. To which we respond, It is true that a genius can do ten times better than us. The Prophet wasallam gave us ninety-nine attributes. But what makes his list miraculous and divine is the one he left out of his list. The word Father, that is a miracle. The Father in Heaven In our human list, no contributor will fail to utter the word Father in the first half a dozen attributes. The miracle of Muhammad wasallam, 
This is not the 99, but this particular one which he kept out of his Qur'an. The word Father as an attribute of God was dangled before him for the 23 years of his prophetic life. He eschewed it. He kept it out of his vocabulary, consciously or unconsciously, for over two decades and hence out of the theology of Islam. You have a right to ask me, what about the Christian's Lord's Prayer? Yes, what about it? Read it, Mr. Didat. So I read. O our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is wrong with that? You ask. Nothing. Then why are the Muslims so allergic to it? I am not so jaundiced as our opponents. We have to acknowledge that the Christian prayer is a beautiful prayer, but there are certain deficiencies in it. You see, my child will never ever learn God's name through this prayer. What is his name? In all the 27 books of the New Testament, God's name does not occur even once. Father is given here as a substitute. This is not his name, as an attribute meaning Lord, God, Creator, Provider, I can take no exception to it. The loving Father in heaven, O oh, our heavenly Father, etc. We Muslims take exception to the new meaning, the acquired connotation of the word Father. Only begotten Son, etc. In Christian theology, this simple, innocent word Father has acquired a novel meaning. He is, according to Christianity, the one who begot the Son Jesus. They say in their catechism, Jesus is the very God of very God, begotten of the Father, begotten, not made. If words have any meaning, what does this mean? Of course it means what it says. God has many sons according to the Holy Bible. Adam, Israel, Ephraim, David, Solomon, etc. But all these are metaphorical sons. God Almighty as the Creator and Cherisher is metaphorically the father of his every creature, every animal or human being. But Jesus, alayhi salam, the Christians say, is not like these. He was begotten, not made. This, according to Islam, is the most abominable utterance, attributing to God and animal nature, the lower animal function of sex. Meanings change. In the beginning, the word father for God did not carry any blasphemous associations. But words do change in their meanings at times. I will give you just two as examples, comrade and gay. Comrade, originally a beautiful and innocent word meaning a friend, an associate or a companion derived from the old French comrade, roommate or soldier sharing the same room. But today the same word stinks in the nostrils of the Americans as a commie, a communist, a member of the Marxist-Leninist party, any radical viewed as a subversive or revolutionary who should be eliminated as a pest or parasite. If any foolish friend addresses you today as comrade in the United States, he could jeopardize your career as well as your life. Gay. What is wrong with this word? Nothing at all. I learnt this word in my early schooling, as shown or characterized by cheerfulness and light-hearted excitement. A merry person. I was taught to sing. Gentle lords and ladies gay, on the mountain dawns the day. I have forgotten the balance of the poem. Here I understood the meaning of the word gay to mean happy and joyous. I did not have the slightest inkling that one day, such an innocuous word which children learn at school would in time acquire a filthy, dirty meaning of being homosexual, sodomites, and catamites in its very primary sense. So ladies gay would mean today, ladies lesbian. In the manner the respectable word father has become contaminated by the belief of the only begotten of the father, etc. Rub or Ab God Almighty through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has protected Islam and the Muslims by keeping the word father Ab for God, out of his religious vocabulary. It is a miraculous fact that though the Holy Quran lists 99 attributes to God, including the word Rab which means Lord, Cherisher, 
sustainer, evolver, etc. This attribute rub occurs dozens of times in the Book of God. But the easier word up, meaning father in Arabic and in Hebrew, is not used even once. Thus preserving the Muslims from the blasphemy of the only begotten son. To whom must we give credit for this feat? Allah or Muhammad, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, disclaims any credit, always saying that all this is given to him by inspiration. The words ye hear is not his, they are God's word as dictated to him. End of chapter 5